Well, I haven't made a video in a little while, so this one will catch up. Uh, first thing I noticed was that the ABS is made by Bosch. And I have removed, well, I put everything back together for the timing belt, and I tightened the timing belt, uh, well, I tightened the crankshaft pulley bolt, 14 foot-pounds, and then turned it 90 degrees probably turn it a little more than 90 degree, degrees, but I'm okay with that. I have removed the lower control arms, and there are Allen heads inside, Allen head slots inside of these for, uh, I think it's 5 millimeter or 4 millimeter, and so some new little bracelets on to see if it keeps the mosquitoes off. I don't think it's going to. But so far they're kind of landing and then not doing anything. We'll see how that works. Uh, they're 97 cents a piece, so at two bucks a day, not really worth it. Over the spray, and then just using fans. But so everything's put back together. The radiator still needs to be filled. The engine needs to run for five minutes to stretch the belts, break them in because they're new, and then readjust and torque down. I'm going to have to pause this video. i got some mosquitoes I need to kill. Okay, those things clearly didn't work, just like I thought. So if you see these, go ahead and pass them right up. I just put natural bug spray on come on that one so that's the stuff that works good for me and so I put everything back on radiator still needs to be topped off and uh, burped bled air bled out of the system uh, accessories still need to be tightened down. They're just kind of in here with the adjusters tightened. It's going to run it for five minutes. I added, uh, I don't know that you can see it. Yeah. Uh, I added washers and a locking washer around there, hoping that that'll give me enough grip and bite that it won't spin. Because that thing's a pain in the butt to tighten down. I think that's a horrible design. Uh, so everything went back together, valve cover, gasket, uh, there's a lot of stuff that if you don't do it in the right order, you're going to be taking it back off, putting it back on. Uh, one of them was I neglected to put the top of the valve cover back on, so I had to take all this back off to put this back on. Uh, there wasn't too much order with the brackets, except for I forgot to put this one on. Uh, I actually dropped the bolt, and the, or screw, whatever, and it fell down to the splash seal. It didn't fall on the ground, so I pretty much knew it was on top of the splash seal. Shield. Ah, too much saliva. And need to remove the splash seal anyway, because I was going to have to drop the transmission. So once I took it off, the bolt fell out, and I had to do a uh, a heck of a maneuver to try to get that thing on there, but it's on there. So this side is done. Left the air cleaner off because it needed to be off. And then, I'm, and oh, I added stickers. And if you know anything about stickers, stickers increase the resale value exponentially. Uh, so there's still room for a sticker here. And I don't know what that's going to be. It may be right here as well. So. No information's on here, all the information's on the other side of this, so no biggie. Which was pretty smart they finally did that, because they used to put stickers on the top here, and those would wear away. And then you wouldn't know what slot was what, unless you had a picture, or you went online, or you had the manual. 
I discovered that last time I did an engine transmission on this thing, uh, on a 7th generation, somebody had messed up the uh, bolt threads on the timing belt tensioner pulley, stripped them out, and replaced them with uh, uh, helicoil, and that didn't hold. And I wasn't comfortable with using that, the customer wasn't comfortable with it, so I ended up having to pull the entire engine transmission as one unit, because he also wanted a clutch done. I, I didn't really have the room, uh, and I didn't have any tool at the time to turn the uh, um, the drill bit because it's just it's such a small drill bit and I think the drill bit that came with the kit was too long uh, so I couldn't bore out the hole and fix it I ended up using a time cert and I used a big cert because a big cert you have to use if somebody's already tried to make a repair with the helicoil. If nobody's tried to make a repair, you can use a regular time cert. So I had to buy that kit. That was $100 just for that. I didn't pay for it, and I kept the kit, which was a decent deal for me. But, you know, I did like five to $7,000 worth of work on that car, and only got paid maybe 1500 bucks. So it was not a very good deal for me. But I pulled the whole engine transmission as one unit, from the top with this engine hoist and this one I didn't have to do that so I was going to just drop the transmission out the bottom well what I discovered is you can't do this like the prior generations you have to drop the subframe on this and I didn't have enough information to where I felt competent in even tackling that job until I found the uh, Helms service manual and then that gave me step-by-step -step instructions gave me illustrations and every torque spec I needed and once I found that information then I felt confident in tackling it so what I've done is I've removed the hood my girlfriend helped me and I don't think this hood has ever been removed before it had some kind of bonding agent on it which you're not going to see too well here but this white stuff is actually white out and that's to help me realign the hood same thing on the other side so that the hood goes on in the same spot it came off or close to it and then I'll have to do some minor adjustment and be careful when you're closing it because you can end up having a tight clearance and scratching the paint on the fender and the hood probably at the same time and then you're going to have rust problems in the future and you don't want to do that so avoid that if all possible. Uh, and what I did was I had a rubber mallet that was sitting right here with the hood shut down on it so that I didn't have a sharp angle. And I undid the two back bolts first, or screws, and then took you know the front screw off and the other screw off. Or Actually, before I even took those last two screws off, I pried the hood up and broke that bonding agent free. Um, then I took that one off and that one off. My girlfriend was over here, I was over here. We picked it up and lifted it up on top of the car. And I had a blanket and a tarp up there so I don't scratch anything. Uh, so that got rid of the hood. You have, in order to do this, you have to support the engine from above with a chain hoist. There's, this is the appropriate method. Other people do different methods. I'm only going to cover the appropriate method. That's the only thing I'm going to be doing. Uh, Haynes also shows that you need to get a 8mm by 1.25 threads uh, bolt and washer. And I may put another washer on there, but I don't think so. I think it's good enough. That bolt already, or screw already had a washer on it and a locking washer. I found it in my bin. I, I don't know what it's off of, but I guarantee you it's another Honda. This is off of a Mazda. I can guarantee you that engine. Whenever I see Mazda engines, I usually grab those in the junkyard. They're uh, they're great, and I have it tightened down. And I'm hoping this thing's not going to swing over and damage this EGR valve at all. Uh, I should probably. I don't really want to torque it down any further. Um, but 
my boom does not extend out far enough. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move it to the other side of the car, which is fine by me, because uh, well, it's actually not fine by me. This is the side I'm going to work on, but this is the side I'm going to walk around. It's out of my way of walking, at least. Uh, there are two bolts in the back of the subframe, and I'll go into the car and show those. This video is getting long. So here's one of the rear subframe bolts. You only have to do this on both of these, and there's actually marks here and here on the rear subframe. And then you have the other one over here. And it's just the ones that are right in front of the sway bar. And you've got to mark these for some reason. Uh, and then you've got to put them in the same spot. It's got to be something to do with centering them. And supposedly this is a 14 millimeter. And this one here is a 10 millimeter. As far as the diameter of the shank. I don't believe that. They both look the same. But the Helms manual says that. And it says that this one requires like... 40 something foot pounds and this one's 71 and I'm not so sure about that need to tighten that down I got a little bit of a leak going on there I already drained the transfer case with the transmission I should say uh, I need to pressure wash this thing these people lived on a dirty damn road uh, you have to drop the exhaust and I'm concerned about that uh, I'm going to spray this thing again with PV Blaster that there and the other next connection is back here behind the catalytic converter. And I'm debating on whether I'm just going to take it off all the way back there. And just drop this whole thing as one unit. You have to disconnect the O2 sensor connector here, obviously. And, uh, there's another O2 sensor connector that I disconnected up front. Uh, and then you have to take out, like, I don't know, 10 bolts or something. All these subframe bolts. This whole subframe will drop, but you also need to uh, disconnect all the motor mounts and transmission mounts. So, well, you need to support it from the top before you go doing all that. And this is going to be a job. But the uh, lower control arms are all taken off. You have the end links, and this end link ended up splitting on me. I can get it to focus. Yeah. Ended up bending my Allen wrench too. So I'll be taking that back to Harbor Freight. Uh, CV axles already taken off. Ball joints are obviously separated. Uh, CV axles are going to come out. I've already taken off their nuts. And a lot of work was done last night, so uh, there's still a few more things to do. I'm going to tighten that up because I don't want that dripping on me. Uh, and no more leak. Now maybe there's a small leak. It keeps leaking just a little tiny bit. Uh, but nothing in comparison to what it was. I mean, it was leaking all the way down the body. But they never ran this thing hot, and they never started it for oil because that head was extremely clean. There was no burnt yellow or orange or brown. Brown's the worst other than black. So this thing may have been leaking oil, but they always maintained it, which is good. So I have no issues with that. It's the best case scenario. And it was a small leak. They leaked just a drop. Uh, well, I don't know, there was a pretty big puddle here under that day, but it might have gotten progressively worse. So, that's everything for right now. That's the other O2 sensor disconnected, I think. Uh, so we're just going to follow the Helms manual, start disconnecting more stuff until we end up with a transmission taken away from the engine block and I gotta be careful to keep these bolts together, these screws. I'm gonna put them through a box and uh, identify them and if there's a hole for a screw to go back in, that's exactly where it's gonna go back in and that's the best place to keep it. And we're gonna get started. <laughs> 